Turing equation for theta. Now, when I say solve for theta, that means I want to find all of the angles that satisfy this equation, all of the angles of rotation that make this equation true. And when I say all, of course, there's an infinite number of angles that would work, but I'm restricting my domain. I only want to find the angles between 0 and 2 pi radians that satisfy this. So radians, let's get in our radian head. 0 radians, pi over 2 radians, pi radians, but that's about 3, right? That's about 3 radians. 3 pi over 2 radians. 2 pi radians, which is a little more than 6. So a whole rotation, 2 pi radians, a little more than 6 radians. One radian is about there, OK? All right, so I'm analyzing this, and I'm saying, OK, I see a square. I have a quadratic trig equation. We've solved these before by factoring. But something looks a little strange here. I'm seeing two different trig equations. Right? It's almost like 2x squared minus 3y equals 0. I've, it's kind of like having a quadratic with two different variables. I don't think I could solve that, right? I would need more information. Well, handy for me, I have some information. I have some information about sine and cosine and how sine and cosine are related to each other. And more specifically, perhaps the easiest thing to do is to see how sine squared is related to cosine squared. We've been talking about trig identities. We're going to use a trig identity here, do a substitution that will help me solve this. All right? So the trig identity that comes to mind for me is the Pythagorean trig identity. Some people call it the Pythagorean trig identity on the other side of the pond. OK, cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta equals 1. That's just a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We've talked about that in the previous video. This gives me a beautiful relationship between cosine squared and sine squared. And I'm thinking I could use it to come up with an expression to substitute in for sine squared theta. So if I subtract cosine squared theta from both sides here, ah, so now I have sine squared theta equals 1 minus cosine squared theta. OK? This is just one of my trig identities that I know. So look, this is equivalent to this. These are identical. So can't I lift this out and in its stead replace it with that? Because those are exactly equivalent. I'm just substituting it with something that's equal to that. Kind of like what we did when we were solving a system of equations, in case, in fact, that's exactly what we're doing, right? So I'm replacing sine squared theta with 1 minus cosine squared theta. And now I'm just going to write the rest of the equation. And I think now, I'm just going to distribute and clean this up a little bit. You'll see that this is a solvable quadratic trig equation. All right, I'm just going to move everything on the other side of the equal sign, because I don't like having negatives in my leading coefficient. That's just no fun. So let's bring everything over to the other side. I hope I didn't freak anybody out by doing that. All right, I've got a quadratic. If you like, you could just momentarily imagine that just being made of x's. And you can say to yourself, self, I can factor that. Of course, if you couldn't factor it, we have other options. Quadratic formula, completing the square. But let's factor. I'm thinking that's factorable. So let me erase my trig identity here. And I'm just going to dive in and factor the trig version rather than the x version. 2 cosine theta times cosine theta. That's going to give me my first term. 2 times 1, one of the negative, will work for my second. 
I'm thinking that that will give me a 4 cosine theta. This will give me a minus 1 cosine theta. That works. All right, so now just I have two things multiplied together that give me 0. That's that beautiful property of 0. One of those has to equal 0, or perhaps both of them. So that means the cosine of theta equals 1 half, or the cosine of theta equals negative 2. <gasps> what? Well, that is insanity. The cosine of theta can equal negative 2. If you recall, cosine, like the sine, is a nice sinusoidal curve. Its range is from negative 1 to 1. It's impossible, if you think about it, to have a cosine that's bigger than 1 or less than negative 1. So that is a dead end. That just leads us nowhere. But this, ah, that's a nice friendly ratio from our unit circle. Cosine is positive since it's associated with the x in the first quadrant or the fourth quadrant. Right? Cosine is 1 half. So I can either do this in my head and say, OK, the cosine of pi over 3, is that going to work? Yeah, sure, a 60 degree angle would create a cosine of 1 half, which is pi over 3 in radian land. So that's one of my solutions. And the second solution is 2 pi minus pi over 3, which, let's see, 2 pi would be 6 pi over 3, so minus pi over 3 would be 5 pi over 3. So those would be my two solutions. Okay? And of course, you can check these very easily by substituting those back in to the original. So 2 times the sine of pi over 3, quantity squared, minus 3 times the cosine of pi over 3 will get you a 0. So 2 will 5 pi over 3. All right. That wasn't horrible, right? It's really just solving a trig equation with the, that initial substitution using our knowledge of identities. All right. I hope that helped.